Let's bring in Amali Tower, the founder and executive director of Climate Refugees, a nonprofit that helps people displaced because of climate change. Amali, clearly coastal erosion from climate change is a huge problem. Are there cities that are at greater risk or at risk, period, of being submerged in the next decade? Like if you are Venice, if you're Amsterdam, if you're New Orleans, how worried should you be? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there isn't a coastal city or island state in the world that isn't experiencing rising sea levels, right, and, and coastal erosion. <laughs> uh, but not, I would say that not all have the same resources to adapt to the effects and the impacts of those challenges. Uh, Miami, um, the, the Keys in Florida, uh, uh, parts of Southern California, Norfolk, Jakarta, Bangladesh, Pacific Island states, you know, um, but there's a vast degree of difference in capacity to respond, not to mention contribution to climate change in the first place. So difference in capacity and resources. So mm -hmm. how do we help communities, cities that don't have their resources? Well, the first thing we have to do is actually step up on climate finance, you know, and that's, that's the conversation going on right now at uh, COP26. Um, a lot of pledges have been made that, you know, just haven't been met, to be honest. Um, so uh, pledges have to be made in terms of climate finance, uh, rather commitments. Uh, we have to move from pledges to, to, to commitments um, to finance the adaptation that so many countries, cities need in order to adapt to these negative impacts of climate change. But even more than that, what's even more urgent is for the high emitting countries to reduce emissions now. They have to drastically cut and uh, transition to green economies. I mean, we, we really can't continue to warm the planet any further because clearly there are populations and it's the poorest people all around the world that are paying a disproportionate price. So Amali, how do you hold countries and or corporations that are making pledges accountable. It seems we've been down this road before. So if something is non-binding, that is a problem. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. That continues to be one of the sort of biggest issues and challenges in international governance and in international law. But we do, you know, it's, it's not the first time we've, we've reached that Rubicon. Um, you know, we do have a lot of tools in the toolbox. Um, global cooperation, you know, is, is really based on that universality of understanding that this is a shared problem. This is, you know, by no means, though, um, created by all the same people. So I think what you're seeing happen now, though, is the reason why this topic is even gaining so much momentum is because you're seeing the impacts of this all around the world. Just look at the floods in Germany last year, in Europe, you know, um, it, Greece in the, with the fires, Australia. You're, you're starting to see that this is crossing from the global south into the global north. And that, I think, is an important conversation and a tipping point in in also galvanizing action. And Amali, very quickly, we're out of time. What about the communities and people who've had to flee their homes and their towns? Is there any kind of resource for them? Yeah, well, the international community bears responsibility for protecting migrants wherever they may resi reside. Migration needs to be um, protected as a right, especially in the context of climate change. All right, thank you. We'll have to leave it there.